Welcome to the channel. I'm David Poe. Let's look at the palette today. We're using titanium white, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue. Then I have cad red light, cad red, uh, cad yellow light rather. And then we've got yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and a little bit of ivory black. I only use that if I need to uh, mix some mixtures and sometimes I can make some really good greens with that. So, and notice that uh, I've been generous in the amount of paint that I put out because even in a small painting, you need enough paint to cover it. And oftentimes as beginners, one of the uh, biggest mistakes that uh, beginners often make is not putting out enough color. So uh, buy the big tubes, uh, usually uh, some that come in uh, 200 uh, milliliters a piece or the uh, uh, 150s instead of the little bitty uh, 37 or 40 milliliter tubes. So that, that will give you the best uh, value for your money. I'm using one palette knife. This is a diamond shaped palette knife. Uh, I'm not even sure what brand it is, but uh, and I use this just basically to mix in and sometimes to put a line on the canvas with it. So, so you'll want to have at least uh, one palette knife. Then let's look at the brushes today. I use Utrecht. And the brand, uh, the name of the brand there is Utrecht, and it's a 209 uh, line, and this is hog bristle brushes. I use an 8, and I use, what else do I use? I use a 6. These are all flat brushes. A 4 and a 2. So those are all hog bristle brushes. And then I use two other brushes. Let me get those out for you. I use a rigger or a liner. This is the number two liner. This is a synthetic uh, bristle brush from Princeton, the Aspen line. And I also use one round for some detail work. This is number two. And also from the uh, Princeton Ashland line. For the surface, I'm using the 11 by 14 inch canvas panel and then for the easel itself as you see I'm, i got this set up i use this outdoors as well as inside and this is the uh, uh coulter easel by art box and panel and uh, what i love about it is it has two two pieces the one is the panel holder and uh it's just uh, with some screws here and then you can get your panel really tight and then you also have access to all of the, the canvas. So I like that about this particular model. And then it gets the canvas up um, about eye, eyesight. Uh, so that way you can look right at your subject matter as well as light on your canvas. And then uh, this, uh, much like a French easel, puts it as a table. And uh, it's lighter though than a French easel because you're using, um, using a tripod, using this holder, uh, the whole setup probably uh, this this uh, palette and the canvas holder only weighs about five pounds, and then whatever uh, whatever the weight of your easel or your tripod is going to be. I use a slick is a slick U eight thousand for the tripod, and that's an aluminum one, but it it's a wider base to it. And outside, it provides a little bit more stability if you happen to have wind. Some others prefer uh, the carbon-based uh, uh, tripods that uh, weigh a little bit less. But uh, for your money, you can't go wrong with a cheaper version with this aluminum one that's about 50 bucks compared to uh, other setups where you may be using 100 and $150, $200 uh, tripod with it. And then this provides a real sturdy table to do your mixing. I use uh, mainly this area in the middle for the mixing and put some of my, let me get my Gamsol in my container over here. And then I can put a pallet knife or other supplies out on these two sides. But you could actually use both of these for mixing of colors as well. Um, I think that does it for the materials that we're using. Oh, I did mix this ahead of time with my uh, Gamblin gel and this this helps uh the painting dry a little quicker so the galca gel is helpful with that and then i mix it directly into the titanium white 
and that way usually your your white or your lighter colors are the last things that you paint and that way most of the painting will have some of that in it and will help in that drying process especially if you're painting in the winter and if you're painting indoors you'll want to use that outdoors in the hot summer I, I may not use a medium at all all right well let's get into today's painting all right for our subject today we're just going to use our imagination we're going to do a winter scene i'm going to start by laying in a sketch this is going to be a scene with some trees and uh, some snow since it's i'm painting in january there's a little bit of snow still on the ground so we'll see see how this works out i'm going to use some burnt sienna begin sketching this out and i'm dipping it my uh a number two brush and i'm using some gamsol to thin that out i want a very thin sketch today so we're gonna start with the horizon line you want to do your horizon line not in the not in the uh, uh middle of the painting but but about one third perhaps or we could bring it up to two thirds and have it really high uh depending on what we're what effect we're wanting to get but if you do it right in the center you're basically cutting your canvas in half and it will just not be as interesting if you do that all right, and then we're gonna have some trees that could come down from this area here. So we're just going to kind of sketch that in as to where those are gonna be. No details here. What I'm, I'm doing is I'm looking at the, the shapes, just the big shapes and trying to lay that in a little bit. So this is where that, that tree mass is going to go, is down in this area. At least the ones that are a little closer to us are going to be in this area. Of course, the leaves go all kinds of different directions, so... I want this to be a kind of thin at this point. I'm not even really thinking about tree limbs or anything else at this stage. All right. Now we're going to have some trees all through the, out this. And uh, so this is going to be a little bit thinner and these are going to be a little farther away. So I just want to Come in with a little bit of color here, dipping my brush into some Gamsol or Mineral Spirits. Just to give some suggestion of, of some trees back here. Just the burnt sienna giving us a nice little background. A little bit more Gamsol. I want this to be very thin. See, I want this mass here to stand out more. In fact, make it this a little bit darker over here for that very reason. All right. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of a background, but then you can take your paper towel and say, I, I think this is a little bit too dark here. And so I'm going to just use this paper towel, sketch in some of this area. And then I don't want that line there, or at least not as bold as it is. I can come back and fix that a little bit later. Go in here a little bit. Let's 
sketch out my shapes a little bit more. All right. And here's gonna be my land mass. Sketch this in a little bit. Here I'm gonna use a vertical stroke instead of horizontal. Since it's a little closer, I've added just a, a touch of ultramarine blue. Give this a little bit darker feel down here. And uh, the other reason is that uh, while we're going to do a snow scene, I want some contrast. And so I can make the snow much brighter if that snow is on top of a dark value, a darker value at least. All right. Get some color in here. This becomes my under painting. Wipe off the brush a little bit. And now I'm going to go back in with the paper towel even. Wipe some of that off. Make sure I cover all the white. I'm not really too concerned now. I just want uh, some randomness. Nature is very random, so you don't want any patterns. So I'm trying to, I'm just kind of taking this and just kind of twisting it a little bit to suggest some foliage down here, perhaps. All right. And then I'm going to leave this part white because that's going to be primarily sky. So we're going to leave that. Now I'm going to throw the tissue away and get another one ready to go when it's needed. All right. Now we're going to keep it fairly light, but now we're going to go back in with the, the darks. So I'm taking some burnt sienna now. And oops. I need to trade brushes. I sketch with the number two Utrecht hog bristle brush, flat, which is now kind of a filbert. I put that in there for now. I'm going to take a dark, uh, a bigger brush here. Let's go with the number six. So I'm now dipping that into the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. More ultramarine blue than burnt sienna. This will give me a nice dark. And now I'm going to squint on the resource page. And now I'm going to, to put in where I see the darkest darks. Which are at the base of this tree. And notice how I'm, I'm holding the handle. And then stepping back as I'm putting these marks in. And this allows me to get some randomness to, to the, uh, and some spontaneity to the paint strokes. And I'm purposely trying to make sure that there's some variety here in these strokes. And you'll want to connect your darks. There's some darks in this area here. Not quite as dark over here, but there's a few. Some of these won't remain. We're going to be coming back over top of a lot of this. I 
And there's a few up here. indication of a couple of trees here. These might become tree branches at some point. And especially here we want some tree branches. That gives us some darks and the painting is beginning to take a, a little bit more shape here. Now we can continue with our darkest darks and and uh, work to the lightest lights. That's what a lot of artists do. At this point though, after I get the initial sketch in and my darkest darks, I like to get my lightest lights in and that way I can judge everything off of that. So. I'm going to now turn my attention to the sky. For that one, I'm going to grab a different brush. This is a number eight. Get a different uh, clean paper towel. Now I'm going to dip into my titanium white. And I am mixing in just a little bit of the phalo blue. Make sure I've got enough of this blue on my palette so I don't have to keep remixing it. Okay, and the lighter colors are going to be closest to where the trees are. Once again, I'm burying the brush. And here I'm trying to put on a thicker amount of paint because I am not planning on going back over it with a lot of uh, different colors yet. Now, within the tree, that color is actually going to be a little darker. So at this point, I'm adding a little bit more of the phalo blue. Once again, I'm trying to create some random shapes. I'm not thinking about trees at this point. I'm just thinking about some shapes. And where, where it makes sense. Obviously, this color is not going to make any sense down here. Right? There's not, you're not going to see a bunch of sky closer to the earth. You're going to see it up here where, where more of the leaves are. Just 
just kind of touching it to the canvas. Maybe a few over here as well. So I'm going to put a few of those in at this point. All right, now adding a little bit more of the phthalo blue, just a little bit. Come up here. The sky gets a little darker as, as you look up. I'm gonna leave a little space in between those so we can blend the two together. So it will look a little bit more natural. Add a little bit there. Okay. Now I'm going to remove that paint using a paper towel and just pull through. And I'm leaving it for a little bit on there, but it's fairly dry. And now we're going to go back in and I'm going to blend these two shades together for the sky. I like using a, a vertical stroke here to accomplish this. All right, see how that, that helped that a little bit? Now, of course, we can always come back in after, after we get more of the colors on the canvas and see how we're, how we're doing. taking a step back and deciding what exactly I want to do next. Quite a bit of uh, shadows in the foreground, and those are appearing to take on a little bit more of a purplish color. So I'm going to put that, grab my darker brush, the darker colors were on it, the number six, and now I'm taking ultramarine blue little bit of the cad red light to produce a, a purple adding a touch of the titanium white so we can see the purple tone to it all right a little bit more titanium white a little bit more cad red light and a little bit more of the ultramarine blue so i can get a a nice pull of this color here. Okay. So we got some snow tracks, if you will. Coming kind of this way. And right in here, I see this color. So squint and then lay the colors in from a distance and don't mess with them again sometimes the biggest mistake we make is that we try to go in and change things a little too much See some, some other purples in here. Just 
Just using some vertical strokes. So this is some, some foliage in this area. Certainly some darker colors here. I don't want to cover all of the, the darkest darks I just put down. So now I'm using that underpainting as a kind of guide for where I want to put this purple. I don't want to cover all of that, but I do want to cover most of it. I carry this lighter purple now all across here. to the sky a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to step back and see where we are at this point. As I clean off my brush, Fairly happy with that. I 
there's a little bit of green still. And so we're going to mix that green using yellow ochre, some ultramarine blue, just a little bit, and a little bit more of the ultramarine blue. This is going to be a toned down green at this point. I don't want it to stand out a whole lot. Using the same brush. And now I'm going to just put in where I see it the most. So there's a few spots over here. And the tonal value is very close to the purple that we just put in. This is a little bit thicker stroke than I'm putting in here. Varying my brush strokes as I, as I see some of this in. Right. Gives us a little bit of variety in that section of the painting, which is where the, the thickest foliage is. And I'm cleaning off my brush just using a paper towel. I don't need to do the gamma saw all the time. I'll get a couple of other paper towels out. So I'm ready to, to work on something else. Now, we're going to get the snow in, or at least the first part of the snow. So, in order to do that, I use the palette knife, and I'm going to scrape my palette off. Because I don't want those darker colors that are on the palette right now to contaminate my mixture. So, once I've covered the canvas with the underpainting and my darkest darks, it's a nice idea to take a moment to clean off the palette, use a little bit of the cam saw and the paper towels after I've scraped off the biggest parts of that paint and slow down the process a little bit. So that way I can think about being bold. This is that part of the painting in which I want to increase the amount of paint I'm actually putting on that canvas. I don't want to be timid. And, I, and every stroke that I put down, I want to put it down and I want to leave it alone. All right, so I'm taking some titanium white with the palette knife. And I don't want this to be my strongest white. So now I got to figure out, well, what, what color would look good? Well, I'm going to put in a little bit of the cad yellow light, which will add some color to that. And will kind of remind us that there's, the sun is touching these areas. Now, for this, I'm going to use the number four that I haven't used before. And I am going to begin putting this down. And on top of this, I will put my, my lightest lights. So, if it doesn't look like snow at this point, that's okay. So I put a few strokes down.
so tempted to try to put a bunch of detail in this, but the trick really is trusting yourself enough and not thinking too much about where you are putting these, these blobs of paint down. trying really hard not to think too much about how I'm laying this down. With the exception of back here, I want to use horizontal strokes to give the impression that it, the landscape's going backwards there. step back now take a look at what I just did all right now there's some there's some snow on this tree taking some titanium white putting it onto the yellow mixture which is almost flat now so this is going to pick up just a little bit of the yellow but not quite as much and that's what I kind of want all right and now once again I'm going to make strokes and try not to think too much about them Now I'm wondering if I need to go in with some browns first. No, I think I think this will be okay. Now I'm leaving this intentionally more bright because this is my area of focus is this tree right here. You see that those are a little bit too strong. So I'll go back in and just kind of feather them out a little bit, which will take the intensity off of them. Kind of mix it with what's already on the palette here, or rather on the, the uh, panel that I'm using. Just 
just touching that canvas lightly. Now I'm going to give a little bit more definition to some of the snow. I'm going to do this by using some of the paint that's already on here. It's not going to be as intense back there as it is up front. So now I'm just kind of Producing a little bit softer effect back there where I want it. Pretty happy with that. I'll make some room on the palette now. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be mixing an orange. I want some orange in this. For some of those distant trees and then for the tree that's in focus. So cad yellow light and some cad red light. And of course that's way too orange. So I'm going to add a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And that will tone it down quite a bit. And then I'm adding in some ultramarine, not some ultramarine, but uh, titanium white to knock that back quite a bit. Let's see if this is a tonal value I want. Yes, that's, that's what I want. So now, Just lightly touching some areas here. I'm looking at shapes and the colors back here now. Particularly looking at where the underpainting is still showing through. I don't want to cover everything about that, but 
that gives me a sort of reference point that I want to follow. hoping that now you see how that purple becomes more intense back there not so dark that's what I was wanting And since these trees are vertical shapes, you'll notice that I'm trying to mirror that. I'm not painting branches, but I'm suggesting that they might be in that, those darker shades and that some of this is the light reflecting off of what's remaining there. Feather these out a little bit. There we go. Stepping back a little bit. Let me see how that looks. Okay. I like, I like how that looks. Oh, there's this dark spot where there's a tree, but that tree's a little too much. So there we go. Break that up a little bit with a few spots of color. And then over here, this part is closer to us. So I'm gonna make it more intense of an orange. So I'm adding some cadmium yellow light, add a little bit of the cad red light into that mixture. Okay, I can see on my palette that this is much darker. And let's see how this looks. See, I'm just kind of touching the canvas here. Just looking for where, where I see some of these colors in the landscape and where <laughs> the painting needs these colors. See how that orange next to the purple just really brings it out. One painter I follow talks about the fact that uh, these secondary colors really make or break a painting. And it's basically uh, the mixtures of the purple green and orange the colors that you that are not primary they're the secondary colors step back and take a look at where where we're at okay i see a few a few of these purple notes down here a little bit Now let's take a step back and see how that's looking. All right. Okay, there's a couple 
places where there's an absence of the purple. So we need to put a few Now I'm going to go back and do uh, add some some darker darks back into the painting so that some of these trees will pop a little bit more, especially in this larger tree area here, which will be the focal point. Some of it got lost as we were we were painting the other the other colors in. Now I'm going to switch to my smaller brushes because now we're going to work more with the details. Let's clean a few of these brushes off. It's a good idea at this point if. I always forget to ask this, but you know the drill. If you if you like the content, <laughs> I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Give me a like, thumbs up. Maybe share the video with others that you know of that might be interested in learning how to paint. Thank you very much for your time and your attention to that. And let me check the video here. We're coming up on an hour. off that palette again. I've got all that orange there, which is not, not the color we're going for now. One way you can view this at this point is that it truly does look like just shapes and some colors. Now, how much detail we bring to this is up to us. I'm going to start off, and uh, the two, three brushes I'm going to use now in this are the, the round brush I was telling you about, the number two. This is a Princeton and another, uh, the Aspen line, and then my Rieger or liner brush, and also the number two bristle brush. Let's start with the bristle brush because it's the biggest head. And now we're going to put ultramarine blue and I'm going to, to mix in to that the cad red light just a little bit. I want a dark purple is what I'm going for now. Add some more ultramarine blue back into it. Um, uh, why would I not use ivory black? Well, ivory black is kind of like a, putting a hole in the canvas. So... I only use that in certain mixtures and today and, and oftentimes I put it on and don't even use it. So, all right. So we're going to look at the base of these trees here. Start back up here. Of course, you don't, you don't see all of the tree. I'm just putting in 
the largest parts of the tree. See how I'm letting the, the brush do the majority of the work for me. When you're doing trees, especially, make sure that you're using an odd number of trees. It just looks more natural. If you only put two trees, uh, not the greatest. So think three, five, that kind of thing. Make sure there's an odd number. See one back here a little bit. All right. Step back, see if that's standing out more. Yes, that gives it, it gives me the feeling that there's some other things going on on the other side, but it's not as intense. All right, now I'm gonna take the liner brush, dip it into my Gamsol and then into my same paint mi mixture of ultramarine blue and the cad red and a dark purple. And we're gonna add some branches on here, some smaller branches coming off of this bigger tree. The trick here is Make sure you're looking at your subject for one. You're not trying to necessarily copy that to make it look exactly like the tree that you're seeing, but you want it to look like a tree. And then you want it to, to have a sort of feel of nature. So do this, just let the brush do the work. You can just twirl it. And of course, some branches go upwards, others go across. And that's what you're trying to do. Remember to get enough paint on your brush. I like starting near the base of the tree and then pulling up because then the color naturally gets a little bit lighter as you go up the tree. So it helps with that illusion of detail.
Take your time. And of course, with trees, trees have tons of branches. And you'll notice that I'm putting all of this detail in the same area. I'm drawing my, my viewer's attention to this spot in the forest. And what happens is the mind of the viewer is going to fill in other details as they look at the scene and they begin thinking about it. Now I'm going to come in with some heavier, deeper strokes and more intense white for the snow in the foreground. And I'm going to use for that, I think, my round brush here. So I'm dipping into the titanium white and I'm going to have it as the, my most intense white. So. I'm not going to mix any other color with it, I'm going to, but I do want it to be relatively thick. See how thick that is? So that it's going to go on top of that yellow snow that I already put down. All right. And I want to make sure that I leave it alone. Of course, it's going to be most intense here in this area. So it's wet into wet. So that way, and thick, so it'll sit on top of what's already there. And almost after every stroke, I'm putting more of that titanium white on my brush. So I make sure that it's thick enough to sit over top of that other color. I'm going 
going to take a step back and see how it's going. So far, so good. And then about this area here, I'm leaving that yellow so that it sits back a little bit farther. Right. And now what I'm noticing is I need a more intense purple for some of those shadows. So I'm going to come back in with some more intense purple in this foreground area and then my, my main subject area. I'll go back to using that number two flat brush to do that. Mixing in some ultramarine blue, big gulp of the ultramarine blue. And then just a little bit of the cad red light. And then just a little bit of the titanium white to show that it's purple. titanium white there we go and now once again this color is going to be put on heavier to convey that where time to be bold. Put no strokes in and then leaving it alone. Potentially dragging some of this. So we get these shadow effects. some more of that 
places here. Stepping back and taking a look at that. See if there's anything else I, I need to do. Just sign it and check and see if there's anything else. I can make it different, but I'm not sure at this point I can make it better. I think I need a few browns, a brownish red. Okay. Starting off with the burnt sienna. A little bit of a cad red light. Yes, I like this, this reddish tone here. See what that looks like using my round brush you get a paper towel here just a few Spots on some of these trees is a highlight. Maybe there's a few areas here.
think I need a little bit more blue. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, add a little bit of titanium white into it. Make it kind of a brilliant looking blue here. Add a few spots of that color. Blend that together a little bit. What's on the palette so it doesn't look too artificial. This is going to be more in shadow here, so. Take away some of the white stuff there. A few more areas of snow, more intense, titanium white only. And building it up a little bit more than I did previously. You got one shot of doing this.
right. I think we're going to stop there. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this channel, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up.